Thank you. All right, first question is for Kel. Uh, how much of Mario's story did you know before you started creating the movie together, and how much did you learn while filming? Okay. All right. Uh, see, you can tell I'm not the performer. All right. Um, how much of Mario's story did, we, did I know um, before we started filming? Versus what you learned over the process of creating the film. Uh, well, we had started with a short film, and uh, and as you can see, and actually parts of the short film were in here too. Uh, when when he's building the monkey, the robot monkey, and uh, you you got the sense after we were done with the short film, I had the sense that that uh, that there's a deeper story with Mario, and 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 uh, his wife, uh, you know, came to me, and she started uh, uh, suggesting that. She she knew the stories, Mario's stories, and she started sharing them with me, and uh, and then Mario was sharing his stories with me, and it it, it turned out uh, there's really just a, a really extraordinary uh, story here. Um, when we start to film, when you start to film, you know you don't really, especially a documentary, you don't really know. Uh, simply put, you don't really know what the ending is. You really don't know if there's a story there per se. I mean, on, on, in theory, there's a story. On paper, there's a story. But um, will it translate to film? You really don't know until you actually go through uh, the hard work of putting this together and then sitting with an audience like yourselves and, and hearing the reactions and hearing that when the sheep come out and I hear like, uh, uh, you know, a, amusement from you, uh, I know that, hey, you know, you're engaged in the story and, 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 and that something was working, so. Was there anything in particular that came out specifically during filming that was unexpected where you were like, whoa, that's a magic moment? Um, oh yeah, I mean, I used, to, I used to write to Katie after me and Mario would spend like a few hours filming together and I say, yeah, we got magic here, we have magic here, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, oh, so I'm trying to think like what, what like for the car, for example, uh, you know, I don't know if you can tell, but I actually had to sit in the passenger seat. Uh, Katie would not get into that car and I was afraid to get into that car too, but uh, no, you know, uh, uh, no comment on Mario's driving. He was a great driver, but I was afraid to get into that car. But uh, I had to do it for the for the art. Um, uh, but those were fun fun sequences. Uh, I mean, um, I think uh, actually one of the simplest scenes when Mario's talking about his notebook and he's flipping through it and he's he's referring to. Uh, uh, you know, how, how he was afraid when he first started doing his show and how he's learned so much since then. Uh, little moments like that, you know, I would walk away after the shoot and, and uh, uh, you know, really sense that there was something special there. To that end, Mario, um, this retraced a lot of your journey that you'd already been on. Which parts in particular maybe stand out to you as having been especially difficult to revisit, and which parts were especially joyful to revisit? <laughs> um, uh, that's a great question. Um, well, I think the painful parts for me is the beginning, you know, like just because my parents are such a backbone of my life, because I have kids now, you know, and uh, it just, I can't even watch the beginning, <laughs> I have to leave, you know, because it's like you just realize how foolish you are at your, in your youth, you know, and how I just feel, you know, I was talking to Cal, and Cal was saying, man, it's almost like the film's about family, you know, because it's just full circle, you know, and, uh, and I just, uh, you know, I, uh, oh, man, because I have two kids now. I have a four-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old, you know, and one day they're going to want to rebel, <laughs> and, and I'm not going to agree with it, you know. My mom said to me, the hardest time in her life was when I was hitchhiking, she said. She has three kids, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it's just like, you know, now that I have Gigi, who's four, and she's seen my show a hundred times, and, uh, and she, you know, and then we get into arguments, and she says, I don't want to be in this family anymore. And she's only four, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> I know now, right? Talk about a therapy session. I have a film made about you, you know? Because, like, I see it now. In my head, it's so big, you know? And then we film, and then we talk, and 
And then you just realize, like, you see the real perspective. You see the full circle. And you know what, man? That's the beauty of life, right? That's why we exist. We, we, uh, we drop things, you know? And, <laughs> and it's the imperfections, you know? That's what makes it beautiful. And you know what? I'm just going to say one thing about the robotics that I build. I use a microcontroller, and it only has 13 pins, okay? That means you can only move 13 things, all right? So people say, well, that sucks, because what if I want to move 52 things, you know? Or, you know, what if I want to move, you know, I don't know. And, and I, I'm saying this because innovation and what makes people amazing is how we are limited, you know? And through the limitation and not having the right tools and can't afford this and can't afford that, that's where the greatest stuff happens, you know? That's where the richest music gets created, you know? That's like where the greatest paintings get created, you know? And like, and you know what, man? When I see that beginning now, like tonight, I realize that. It's like, those are my imperfections, you know? And those, that's my foolishness, right? But that's what makes me me, you know? And, uh, and that's, what, that's what, it's that suffering that we get through to, uh, to create greatness. Just like in the film where Cal Captured, I was saying, it takes 1,700, 634 shows to finally know what the, what the song is, right? <laughs> you know, um, doing something over and over again. But anyway, that's the great parts of the film for me is, uh, is just seeing the journey. Like, you know, how many times do I start the car in the film? It's like, oh man, it's not working. Like, that was ridiculous, you know? Like, I never learned how to fix a car, you know? That, it was actually through the film process of me learning, watching YouTube videos and, but yeah, it's just fun at the end, like where it's like, you know what, man, I'm looking at that key, at that film, I remember that moment. It's like, you turn it and you know it's gonna start. You know why you know it's gonna start? Because you checked every single wire three times, you know? And you adjusted that idol, and you adjusted that carburetor, and you cleaned the crap out of it, you know? And I remember doing that, because Gigi was sitting next to me. She had the broken one, she had a, and she was banging on. She said, I'm fixing carburetors, daddy, you know? And uh, yeah, so like, you know, those are the great moments. And uh, that, they're great because they don't happen often, you know? And if they happen all the time, I would take advantage of it. We would all take advantage of it. But anyway, I hope I didn't talk too long. <laughs> it's your show, man. It's all good. <laughs> uh, how's the GT doing now? Um, a little more consistent? Uh, oh, yeah. So the GT is, is good. I, I, uh, I was supposed to sell it because we, uh, we needed a new car. But my, you know, I don't know if, yeah. Well, Facebook friends know, you know, we're in this minivan stage. And I can't, I can't decide, you know, I, I don't want to get a minivan. But I know that we need a minivan. And I'm making that decision for the family. And we're going to get a minivan. And Katie said, if I get a minivan, I don't have to ever sell the Bradley. So, and, and then I realized, wow, you know, that's really awesome. And so we're going to get a minivan. I'm, I'm going to surprise her on Friday, on Valentine's Day. I'm going to get a minivan. So, and uh, I have to. This is what it's about, though. man. You know, it's like, and like, uh, so that's a whole other, that's awesome. it's a whole other film. So. Oh. oh, God, I love that. <laughs> Um, so your gadgetry and your building is so much a part of your act and so much a part of what you do and who you are. I, you explained in the film a bit about how the maker movement helped exp help inspire that and moving on from simple machinery to that complex circuitry. What were some of your early projects that really taught you how that all worked and gave you the confidence? Um, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess it started with, uh, man, I... It started with magic, right? Because what, what, what I loved about Charlie Chaplin is like he has just a hat and a cane, you know? And he does all this amazing stuff with just simple props, you know? Like the idea of like, I, I just saw Bill Irwin's old hats, you know? Like talk about a freaking show, you know, that's just amazing and rich. Um, and, all, and it's like there's not even that many props on stage. It's just like him and, like his, and, and, and his friend, and, and they just have hats. But they make everyone laugh for like a really long time, you know? And I, I think that obsession kind of got me started with, uh, you know, just because that's not just simple, right? <laughs> it, that's a lot of suffering in front of a mirror that you do. And that's kind of like this old, whole other circuitry, you know, that I didn't realize, right? So you start off with uh, having a dream like that. And, and like, I built a cigar, cigar box guitar, and I, I found Make Magazine in 2006. And, and I just kind of took, I was carving wood, making marionettes. And uh, my dream was to make a move, because I love old school automatons. And, and, uh, and it just kind of took off from there, you know? And yeah, I don't know. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the movie was about not only your metaphorical journey, but also your very physical journey. How long have you have you stayed put, and uh, is is that kind of the plan, or are you thinking you're going to take it on the road? Oh, the show? Um, uh, Yourself. Yeah. Everything. Uh, 
Yeah, you know, Katie, oh, man, talk about a powerful person. You know, my wife, she just believed in me when I wasn't believing in myself, you know? And uh, so, like, yeah, she, she started this hashtag, you know, online that says it's a family business, you know? And, and, it's, and so she made this vow where she's like, I'm just going to drive you to every show with the kids, and we're going to make it work, and we're just going to practice. And then we bought a Volkswagen bus, a 1971 Volkswagen um, a transporter that I've been restoring now that's a high top. And so our goal is to, like, I have a couple shows that I've been doing in Tyler, Texas, and Austin. And uh, instead of flying out there, we want to take the bus with the kids because... I don't know, I just, it's, I, I just love and admire how much Katie wants to involve the kids with this business because it really is a family business and this is how we survive. And uh, it's taken a long time to get this far. So, uh, yeah, and I forgot the question now, but I think I answered it. I, I guess kind of, <laughs> do, do you see becoming kind of a nomadic family again or, or are you pretty much rooted now? Yeah, I guess. In the best possible right, way. Right, right. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about, you know, having kids, right? It's like you, I just want... I just want to be the best dad to Gigi and Bear and make sure that I don't take them away from stuff too much. And, you know, t like my dad, right? He came from Italy in the 70s. I hate to, you know, put you on the spot. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he came by himself, you know? And uh, it was a big risk, you know, to, to make, to, to uh, you know, to, 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 for us to have a, a chance to do something better than what he was around, you know? And uh, where he came from in Italy. And, uh, you know, I, I want to do that now, you know? Like, talk about understanding the full circle of life, right? So now Gigi's four, it's like, I want to make sure every decision is based around my kids, you know? So that whole hitchhiking thing, yeah, we're trying to do it in a, in a way that's feasible, right? And uh, maybe we will be able to take two months off a year. That would be an amazing thing where we could travel, you know? Yeah. Okay, back to Cal. Uh, I know you've made all sorts of films. Um, and they're not all, you know, documentaries about a person, but are there any other stories you've got kind of mulling around that's a personal story you want to tell in terms of a documentary like this about an individual? Or are you kind of not doing that right now? Uh, well, before I did Building Magic, I had been doing um, music videos, and uh, you probably got a sense that there was a lot of, uh, of a music video sensibility here. And uh, Mario uh, has a great friend named Rob Carey who... Uh, uh, just, you know, as passionate as Mario is about magic, he is about music, and, and Mario said that he wanted Rob's music to be in the film. But he hadn't heard, you know, Rob's music for a long time, and he didn't know where Rob was with his album, et cetera, et cetera. And so Rob just started sending me demos, and it was a really crazy experience, because unbeknownst to Mario, uh, Rob was sending me these songs that sounded exactly like aspects of Mario's life. And I, I said to Rob, I was like, Rob, how come the soundtrack already sounds like it's, it's you know, done for the film? And he said that uh, he and Mario had spent a lot of time together, so uh, they, they had a lot of uh, uh, crisscrossing stories. Um, all right, and I'm sorry, I think I diverted from your question. Oh, yeah, so about other films and this and... Um, uh, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to say. Uh, I was really dealing with fiction, but um, uh, when I had the opportunity to do uh, this with Mario, um, I didn't want to do a straight documentary uh, where we just have like standard interviews uh, in a room with Mario and we showed old photographs of, you know, Katie in 2009 when she's pregnant, you know, with a voiceover, et cetera, et cetera. I, I always like to, I guess like Mario too, I like to challenge myself. So I didn't want to exist in that sort of traditional documentary world. And um, so we do actually have those on-camera interviews with him, but I tried to blur the lines by placing him environments that sort of exist, that feel like, say, Michigan, or feel like the sheep area in Colorado, and so that the audience, you as the audience, really can't you know, distinguish you know, where is he in time, or that he's placed in that time, even though we filmed it uh, in you know today's time, uh, so so yeah. To be honest, uh, I don't know what I can do after this. I feel like I feel like uh, I feel like Mario has a really universal story, and uh, once you say it, you know you don't really have to. There's you know there's not anything else I want to say at this point. So. All right, and uh, we'll end with a fun one, Mario. What's 
what's the coolest gig you've ever done? And I don't just mean magic, it could be music, anything, but what's one of the coolest gigs you've ever done? Because I'm sure you've done some really yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, oh God, um, let's see, what was the coolest gig I've ever done? Um, I did, uh, oh man, I don't, I, well, Sesame Street, you know? <laughs> I was on Sesame Street last year, and uh, that changed my life. It's like being on Saturday Night Live for like a stand-up comedian, you know? It's, it's like the pinnacle of kids' performance, you know? Uh, I, I showed up there, I didn't sleep the night before, I was so nervous, I mean, I was, uh, but you know what, man? I did my 2,000 shows, you know? So I didn't sleep all night, but I'll tell you, man, I performed the best that day than I ever did, you know? Because my brain was like the Arduino microcontroller, already pre-programmed, in loop mode, and every joke came out. And uh, at the end of the, the shoot, um, uh, I was backstage, they had a puppet kitchen where they, oh man, and the puppets, they look like things from like the MoMA Museum, like they display them all like on tables and, uh, but anyway, I did the Mar Marcel, the monkey, and I watched the director of Sesame Street and like all the creative writers, they were all with their cell phones filming and laughing and, because all their puppets are, are always remote control when there's robotics, you know? So the idea that I time everything like was really exciting to them, you know? And the fact that I had something to give, right, at that moment where they had a new idea, you know? That felt like, damn man, like I have purpose, right? And, uh, and yeah, so, yeah, so, and then you know what, I'm gonna say one more story, okay? I'm sorry I'm talking a lot, but, uh, oh man, all right, so, yeah, so there's this, there's this kid, Ethan, I don't, I don't remember, I think it was Ethan, I'm just gonna say Ethan, but I did, his, I did a birthday party a couple weeks ago, and, uh, and it was terrible, like, every joke, like, I've done the show so much, like, I just, I couldn't feel it, like, I wasn't getting the resonance from the audience, there was only, like, four or five kids, and a, a bunch of parents, and, uh, and I left so down, I'm like, man, like, I, this is what I do for a living, like I do birthday parties and make balloon animals and I can't even do that, you know, like it was just so bad, you know, and uh, it really made me question everything. It was a Saturday afternoon, I had three shows and I get home and that night Katie said, oh, I got an email from the first show, you know, and I was like, oh, you know, this is like, you know, and, uh, and she said, the mom said that when Ethan went to bed, she said that uh, to turn the lights on again and she turned the lights on and Ethan said that today was the greatest day of his life. You know, and talk about like, yeah, talk about like waking up and realizing like we all have a small gift, right? And uh, that's mine, and it's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you very much for sharing that gift with all of us, and your gift as well, Cal. Thanks.